Do you remember with Koberger, before we knew about him, you and I, we had a show the day before he was arrested. <laughs> and you were like, this guy is going to be in a cage. Listen, killer. And the next day he was arrested because we were hoping, hopefully, before the new year. So I think I saw oh. you on December 29th. Yeah. He was arrested the next day. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's just sad. Very sad. I just hope that they, they catch him yeah. and fast. Good afternoon, Gisela. Good afternoon, Grizzlies, and thank you for having me. And thank you for all the purchases of my book. Thank you for all your great feedback. I can't thank you enough. Discovering Lazarus, the good, the bad, and the ugly of John Kelly. How I kicked a horrible cocaine addiction, became a counselor, psychotherapist, and then eventually a profiler. Thank you so much for all your kind comments. Thank you so much for all your subscriptions. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And uh, it's just wonderful to be on again with you, Gisela. I can't thank you enough. Yes, and I'm always honored to have you here and to hear your insights and your wisdom, especially on these topics. When there's a manhunt going on, they need to catch this violent predator from all we know. And yes, for everyone that's bought your book, I hope that they'll leave you a review as well, because that's important. Ah, you know, you're an author. Yeah. <laughs> you're a very good author. Okay. <laughs> you know, something I want to start off with, and just listening to you the other night and talking to some of my colleagues on the stock team, you know, we're looking at, you know, what can we, what can we tie to this guy? What can we uh, stick to him? You know, the killer of Rachel Moore. Okay. And, you know, usually when these guys are just getting started, and supposedly he's just getting started, uh, you know, between 20 and 25, usually, uh, you know, the FBI said between 25 and 35, but I have found that they're starting earlier, you know, in the last 10 years, I've, I've seen this happening, and I call them budding serial killers they're budding they're on their way up okay and this guy i don't think is any different but what's interesting about him is we tried to look at you know what what sophistication does he have what kind of sophistication uh you know does he have in his uh, skill set and you know we really it's too early for us to actually see anything uh about serial murder and his skill set so far. But I'm going to take you to the beginning. And that's where we we were starting and where we're going over. You know, he marched himself through an area that you focused on, Gizmo. You focused on this area, and you talked about the area where the this very young girl uh, was attacked and where he broke into the house. And, you know, that to us was kind of more sophistication uh, that he was showing in breaking an entry. So I have to believe, uh, as many of these guys do, if you could get a look at his history, his legal history, if we ever find out who he is, and even if they knew who he was and going back to his adolescence, I think it would probably be somebody from that area, some somebody from that area that, you know, had some history in adolescence, at least, in peeping, trespassing, breaking an entry. Okay, now he's progressed to home invasion. It's kind of like the Golden State Killer. You know, do you see a, uh, a resemblance there? How he started off as the ransacker. 
and breaking into houses and ransacking houses. I mean, that went on for a long time. Then he, you know, started to move up the ladder. He started to evolve. And I think that's exactly what's happening with this guy. I mean, I think this guy is just now starting to evolve. Because what what we're looking at is we're looking at two different environments. We're looking at an enclosed in-home break-in, and we're looking at an environment uh, which is, because it's enclosed, is usually good for DNA and uh, other fibers a person may have on them because it's protected from the outside elements. So, you know, we see him you know, moving in on that. And then as we're watching him leave, we're watching how he leaves. And of course, all you're seeing is his back as he's leaving, his haircut, which uh, a short haircut in that area could uh, possibly be a gang member or a wannabe gang member. You know, they wear uh, pretty short hair there. Uh, but also, all you're seeing is his back, okay? But you're seeing him carrying something, which I believe is his shirt, okay, in uh, his left, on his left side, walking out. Well, that tells me he didn't put that shirt on because that shirt says something or has something on it that could identify him. So he wanted to keep that shirt you know, hidden or whatever, you know, is written on that shirt, hidden, okay? Then as you're watching him walk away, you can see a glimmer. We weren't sure if it was a knife or it was uh, some kind of tool. The general consensus is that it's a cell phone, okay? And it looks like it's dangling. You can only get a brief uh, shot of it as he's walking away. It seems to be a glimmer, right? But then the other thing we were attracted to, we were attracted to his pants, okay? And those look like joggers, right? So I say to myself, geez, I mean, you know, that would, that, that's the best way to surveil an area. You know, who's going to think much of you if you're a jogger, just jogging down the street, especially if you're a regular jogger and people have seen you? just jogging down the street. Now, of course, we have no proof. We can't prove this, okay? Oh, no, yeah, and most of our community, when we looked at it, it, they actually say it looks like a postal worker's pants. So I don't know. <laughs> it depends. This is one of those cases with a confirmation bias where we see what our experience allows us to see, right? So it could be either, but yeah, if he's in joggers and a regular jogger, that would make sense. It could be, but again, right now we're brainstorming it could be postal pants. It could be somebody uh, that works for the post office, okay? Because somebody that works for the post office and delivers around that area would know that area. Somebody that jogs around that area, you know, if they are jogging pants, would know that area, okay? Yes. So this is important to us because as you brought out how secure that area is, how security minded the people are there. That led us to really understand that, you know, this guy knows his way around security. Okay. He knows how to see, he knows where the cameras are, where the security is, and he knows how to manipulate his way and navigate his way around there. Right. So that's something that, uh, you know, we're very, very much keyed into. Now, the other thing too, is his victim okay this is a very young girl she became his victim how did he know she was there how did he know she was alone is it something he picked up on the internet or is it something he physically saw keeping an eye on her an eye on her house whatever you know uh does he know her from the area in some way but one thing we know for sure, he had to see her somewhere. Yes. Somewhere he had to see her. Now, what they, I am sure, are doing are going back through, you know, the victimology and really trying to talk to her. And 
seeing if she had face contact with him, eye contact, and try to get a composite sketch from her. Okay, now I'm surprised there isn't any out there, but you have to understand it's a very young girl. It's a very traumatic, traumatic situation. And she may not want to relive it. She may not want to talk about it. She may not want to sketch up and sketch him out. You know, it, it may have taken that much of a toll on her. Now, also, usually these guys in parting, what they're going to do is they're going to turn around and they're going to say to the young lady, the young girl, listen, you don't know me, but obviously I know you and where you live. And, and if you don't tell anybody about this and you don't give them a description of me, you won't see me again. But if you give them a description of me, I'm going to come back here and kill you and your family. Okay. Yes. Now that usually is their parting words. If they have left a witness alive, because in most cases they don't leave them alive. You know, it's just like, uh, you know, witness disposal and, and probably with Rachel Moore and, a lot of that was witness uh, disposal because as far as we know, he hadn't killed up until then. And then kind of not saying he hasn't, but we don't know yet. And that was such a kind of, you know, uh, Neanderthal caveman kind of approach from what I'm hearing, hit them over the head and drag them to your lair. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I'm not, I, I, I don't see a lot of sophistication, um, you know, certainly in the Rachel Warren case. If, if, if the theory on jogging is correct, he could have jogged up and down that trail numerous times. We know he saw Rachel somewhere. Maybe that was the first time he saw her. Maybe that's the first time he came across her. But a guy out there jogging on that trail, I mean... You know, he's not, you know, people aren't going to be too suspicious of that. I mean, that's what that trail is there for, for jogging, right? Exactly. So, I mean, I mean, again, we're only brainstorming here and we're throwing all this stuff together. But, you know, something, a piece here, a piece there, a piece over here may jog somebody's memory, okay? Because the other thing uh, we're talking about, too, is uh, we're talking about somebody coming from L.A. for some reason, whether they're returning home to Maryland or they're starting new, a fresh job or something, or just visiting Maryland, but somebody from L.A. And then we start to focus in on the uh, narcissism, the uh, narcissistic personality disorder these guys have, so if he's landed in uh, Maryland, he's from L.A., you know, and he wants to play the role like many of these guys do. And, you know, they're the greatest thing since, uh, you know, Adam's rib for women. And, uh, you know, they, they want to play the role a lot. I'm from L.A. I, I, I was around the gangs. You know, that, that's how to that's kind of the braggadocious kind of uh personality you're going to run into you know uh certainly not after his dna was found and they say he's from la but before that and he'd be bragging may even have a license plate from la which is something that's been out there too uh that's very interesting to us but him playing the role him talking up la you know hollywood you know i'm from hollywood you know playing that role up, uh, acting really cool like that. I mean, uh, you know, that that could be somebody that somebody's ran into because he's had to talk to somebody, he's had to eat somewhere, and he's had to sleep somewhere, okay? Exactly, yes. And and, and this is, uh, these are some points that we think could be, uh, could be uh, interesting, along with him supposedly being his early to mid-20s, you know, um, you know, and, and as he's involving, you know, there's something else that usually the serial killers have, usually, I'd say probably maybe 90%, 80% of the time, 
is some type of learning disability and could be a, a speech impediment, like in Bundy's case. Um, it could be, um, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, just awkwardness about them that, that can create a problem with them learning. Um, most of them, if you notice, do have this, uh, you know, kind of um, awkward uh, behavior about them. They're usually non-social, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, and I don't see this guy being a social butterfly either. Uh, but who? But again, again, uh, we don't, don't know. And and people would pick up, you know, this awkwardness and or whatever uh, you want to call it, and they'd say to themselves, "Yeah, there's something weird. Something, something. He's a little weird. He's a little weird. I mean, they 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 give off that kind of vibe. You know, mm -hmm. that there's something strange about them. You know." Then, I was thinking uh, of what you were saying earlier about the area. I mean, it it was it reminded me of South Africa because you just see burglar bars everywhere, and I mean, he knew how to work the camera. So it's interesting you bring up that he would maybe even be in security or something. You know, knowing how to do that, and maybe if he let's combine it, if he was like a postal worker and knew that that girl was alone that day in delivering a package, and like, oh my word, she says my parents aren't here; they're gone until whenever. You just don't know if it could be something like that. What's interesting as well is what I noticed the sheriff saying is that he tries to destroy the evidence of what he's done. That was an interesting line to me. You know, so if Rachel Morin died from blunt force trauma to her head, uh, what did he do? Then what has he done? Do you know what I mean? Like, And what was that assault? Because the LAPD are saying it's not a sexual assault. So, okay, then what did he do in that home invasion? A lot of things to consider there. Mm -hmm. Well, again, what is what is sexual to him? You know what I mean. What is his meaning of uh, of a sexual experience, of an orgasmic experience? These guys, you know, are all different. I mean, uh, in the Green River case, we were dealing with Gary Ridgeway, and uh, you know, he was killing these women pretty quickly. Okay, and then he was hauling them away, uh, and and trying to hide their bodies as best he could, because he was a necrophiliac and return another day. So his his idea of a sexual experience was not with the living, but it was with the dead after he killed them. Okay, so you know, I mean, all these guys have a different fetish too. I mean, they, they do. Believe me, and we try to zone in on that, you know. So this is very interesting. I believe that the keys to unlocking the mystery of who this guy is um, are definitely there in his uh, earlier offenses as he was growing up, you know, through his teens, wherever that might be, if L.A., L.A., you know, and the history, the warnings. You know, the cruelty to animals, maybe some more, definitely breaking an entry, peeping through windows. And maybe it's, you know, they plead it down. They plead it down. So it's not, you know, peeping through windows. It's uh, not voyeurism. It's not, you know, um, uh, you know, breaking an entry. They, they uh, uh, plead it down to trespass. You know, maybe he has a lot of counts of trespassing, you know, uh, against him or whatever. Uh, I like the I like the postal theory as well. I think it's an interesting theory. The one thing we know for sure is he saw this little girl somewhere. Somewhere yes. he saw this little girl. Okay, and she is, uh, as far as victimology goes, she's completely different than his. Uh, last victim that we know of that he killed, Rachel Moore. Right? I mean, going from a very young girl to a woman, okay? Uh, you know, I mean, that is a whole that that's that's pretty that's a pretty big jump. But it talks about, you know, um the hypersexuality in these guys, it talks about the power, the control, whatever. I mean. At one time, we know what most of these serial killers, 
the reason they need uh, power and control over others is because as children, they felt out of control and felt powerless, okay, in the family of origin where they grew up. But and the other thing, too, is, and we have to remember this always, when you're in this business like I am, the best predictor of present or future behavior is past behavior. Is past behavior, okay? That's like a commandment in a way, okay? So if you look, if you look back and you look at him, you know, moving on this young girl at this house, okay? If we go by his past behavior that would lead us up to that particular behavior, then there would be history. There would be history of him being around houses and being where he's not supposed to be. And when you think about it, a mailman's job would be <laughs> a perfect job to have if you're interested in that kind of thing. The other side of that is, again, in the jogging aspect of it, because the guy looks buff to me. I mean, he looks buff. I mean, he looks like he's in shape, right? Yes. <laughs> so that tells me he's probably working out. Now, I say he looks like he's in shape, but I'm going by the camera's picture. Do you agree with that? That he looks like that? I think you said he might be a swimmer or something. Or yeah, to me, he looks like a, a swimmer. And to some, he looks like a surfer. There's a few of those that have come in. Some say maybe a football player, but it's because of those long, like, lats, you know? It's not yeah. the usual, like, bodybuilder buff look. It's more right. cardio-ish. <laughs> cardio-ish. Yeah. cardio -ish. Okay, so we can talk about swimming, running, jogging, you know. Okay. Yes. So we got so so we're we're in that we're in that uh orchard right now. Cardio. -ish. Okay. I yes. like that. Because I saw the same thing and I'm saying to myself, you know, he's really, really buffed. And you know, I didn't say it before you did, but I'm thinking swimming. And I'm saying to myself, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I got to get more information on this. But you brought that out. So, you know, that's a, it's, it's, it's a possibility. And jogging is a possibility, too, because they are very lean. You know, and if they get into it, they get into triathlons or whatever, you know. You see, the phone, having that phone connected, I wish we knew more about that. Having it connected to his right side and the way it's hooked up. And that's, a, that's really interesting to me would somebody jog could they jog with it like that or would they have to walk with it like that what's you interesting because i want it, it will help with the phone theory is that what's listed on crime mapping.com as that incident at that house at 3 20 in the morning was driving without the owner's consent so that's interesting with maybe like a gang theory like if somebody else was driving or he took someone's car for like grand theft auto that's interesting or is he like a DoorDash driver or, as I say, postal worker, if it's a postal type of vehicle? Because it looks almost like a like a scanner. It looks quite heavyish when he walks. So, you know, those like in shopping scanners, like a, oh, like yeah, a DoorDash yeah. type. It looks almost like because it looks like an electronic screen, sort of, depending on, you know, I've also looked at it a bit. Then is it a gun? Is it a knife? But it looks electronic to me. The light shines in a certain way. So what if it's yes. one of those like scanners, which also would be. The postal theory, I would assume that, or delivery of some kind, an Amazon deliverer, we just don't know. That's quite interesting as well. And then with your theory of the previous behavior, imagine if this assault on this young girl was breaking in to like rip her underwear off. I don't know how else to say it, but if that was the assault, and then maybe that's what he's into. Maybe that's what he's after. Even with Rachel Morin, when maybe she really kicked his ass, she fought back. So it depends also how the victim what she what he does his only goal as a theory would be then i need to get her underwear <laughs> you know what if that's what he's after at all costs because apparently all her clothes were gone that's what makes me think of what assault would that be and why are all her clothes gone where are they so he would take everything because if he only took her underwear then they'd know okay okay this is our guy this is what he's looking for but if he takes everything how are they gonna know exactly they can't pinpoint the fetish yeah, exactly. It takes everything, you know, I mean, because many of these guys are panty guys. You know, we've had guys that are into shoes. Yes. You know, 
you know, that have a foot fetish. I mean, uh, bras, you know. I mean, it depends what's in the fantasy. It all depends on what's in that fantasy that uh, that they're going after. That's a good point. There's no, uh, there's no question about that. And then let me tell you something else, too, that you brought up that is very, very interesting. Not that I think it will uh, will help us catch him, but it might. It might because he may have a history of this as well in dealing with women, in dealing with women. Because as you brought up, Rachel Warren probably resisted and maybe fought back, okay? I mean, I get that she might be that type of woman because she was in pretty good shape herself, right? And certainly wouldn't want anybody to intrude on her looks, right? She, she strikes me as that type of person, okay? And I'll tell you, when you, uh, when you take a look at uh, resistance, okay? Now, I've talked to a couple serial killers about this. And I said that as one serial killer, we'll call him John. I said, John, what gets you to the point of rage, getting angry? I mean, you haven't killed every prostitute or sex worker you've been with. So why some, not others? What's the, you know, what, why is that? Well, sometimes you have a mad on. A mad on? Well, okay. So anyways, you just, you're just pissed off over something or whatever. I said, so is that really what gets you into a rage? Well, that's part of it. And then he said, the, mo the one thing that really gets me going is resistance. He said, when they resist my control, okay, because that's what they want. They want that power control and domination. When they resist my control, he said, resistance gets me, resistance gets me angry, okay? So I backtrack on that and I start talking to him about rejection. You know, and I'm doing research if you've been rejected, you know, blah, 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 because resistance and rejection are pretty close together, right? So, you know, um, when you were younger, what was that like? Blah, 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 blah. You know, how did you feel? I mean, were girls rejecting you at a very early age? You know, did that cause you to feel really angry and upset? And blah, 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 blah. And then I moved to abandonment. Okay. Were you ever abandoned, you know, by your mother, by your father, by other children? Because resistance equals rejection equals abandonment, right? If somebody's resistance in the subconscious, it's not just about the control and everything, but it's about if they have abandonment issues, the abandonment as well, right? Okay. So, you know, resistance is a trigger for this guy. Obviously, this young girl didn't try to resist. Obviously, obviously this young girl very smartly did exactly what he wanted her to do. And... Because of that, I believe she's alive. Because I, I don't. This, this is not this first guy's rodeo, as far as breaking an entry home invasion. Uh, uh he's no, he's done this. That's where his sophistication lies. That's where he, you know, uh, understands security and how to get around security. Not saying he works for security. Organization. I'm not saying he doesn't work for security. I don't know. All I know is he's got an eye out for security. Something else you mentioned, which is really good, probably, you know, came in through a window. Well, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, there you have it, you know. Especially uh, how he left. Did you notice how he walked straight down? But then he, the gate is right in front of him, but he turned right. And when I went on Google Earth and drove around the house, there is no way for him to exit if he turns right like he did. So he has to hop over the corner gate there or I don't know how else he's getting out. That's what he has to do, which is probably how he came in. Absolutely. And this way, probably over in that area, uh, there's there's a uh, lesser chance of being seen. 
if he goes out that way. If he goes straight out, he might run into a camera, might run into some people. So, you know, stage right, you know, likes it stage right. And, you know, it's pretty safe for me. That's the way I came in. That's the way I'm familiar with. That's the way I'm going to leave. Okay. I mean, I, I think he's just a, uh, a, a wannabe gang guy who's uh, into some kind of uh, cardio exercise. And, and, and uh, I, but I think the answers and, and over the years with catching a lot of serial killers, uh, not that we have as much like nowhere near like the FBI or law enforcement. But the FBI always goes back to the beginning because that's where they're just getting started. They're not that smart. They're new at it. They don't have as much sophistication. Okay. And that's where they're going to make their mistakes usually in the beginning. And I think his mistakes uh, and sophistication uh, will wind up being around this home invasion kind of thing. Okay. Now, he's very dangerous. He will kill again. It's only a matter of time. He will get the urge. Okay. His fetish will get the better of him. Okay. And he's going to move on somebody. And it's important for anybody that knows anything to get in touch with uh, with authorities uh, right away. But, um, you know, he's moved to another level. And this is something we've seen many, 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 many times. You know, there, he's evolving. He's evolving, okay? And and unfortunately, uh, there's some woman out there somewhere someday uh, that is going to pay the price if they don't get him for his evolution. It does also, as you were saying, he could actually be from that area where he committed the home invasion knowing the cameras so well. Because turning right, you're right. <laughs> he's going to do that as well to avoid cameras. He'll know he would have looked for a while at the area. Which tells me then when he's out of his comfort zone, if we can call it that, now he's in Maryland, who knows if he's visiting an aunt or if he's just visiting a friend or what is he doing there? We're not sure. Obviously, he's going to go to a trail then where he knows there's no cameras. He could even look it up. Are there cameras on the Mon Pa Trail? And be like, okay, there's not really anything. And find the perfect spot to meet that need. Mm -hmm. So that tells me he's not in his comfort zone when he's in Maryland. Otherwise, he would just do another home invasion. Mm -hmm. That's quite hectic. So he probably is actually from that LA area. Yeah, it seems that I, I, I it seems that way. I believe that it's hard for me to believe somebody from Maryland would go out to LA for just some short period of time and be familiar enough with that area because that's a pretty rough area too based on your feedback about all the bars and everything barred up and everything secured, it reminded you of South Africa. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you have to understand that uh, somebody from Maryland that just left Maryland and go out there, I mean, and then come barging in on a very young uh, uh, girl, not knowing if anybody else is in the house or whatever. I mean, I, I mean, there's more to this. He spent time, you know, uh, or, or, Online or personally, you know, uh, checking her out, uh, they feel no remorse. They feel no uh, guilt. Uh, they want to get you usually to the second location. Most importantly, if somebody, I don't care if they have a gun, a knife, I don't care what they have. If they try to get you to go to a second location, do not go to that second location because if you st get it on with them there, scream, holler, fight, you have a chance of getting away. You go to the second location. They have a planned out. They have a control zone set up. You know, you're done, okay, if they get you to that second location. So it's very, very important uh, for people to, uh, you know, to understand how these guys think. And... You know, they, they believe, uh, you know, it's quite all right to get their self-gratification uh, at the expense of another's life. And, um, you know, it's terrible.
Yeah, and if it's true with um, how she was found, and if they said that it seemed like there was drag marks, even like a blood trail, is what they thought it was, like a deer or something, that would mean that Rachel fought to not go to the second location. But he probably right. had already a rock or something there. But she fought, right. and then he then he dragged her either way. So right. terrible, you know, I'm sure. And, you know, she was a bodybuilder or weightlifter and doing the, the tanning and looking after her looks and strength and health. So, I mean, I think she fought hard, but he still, it's amazing to think that he didn't then back off. He still went through with all of this. Isn't that amazing? That point. Think yeah. about that. Now he's just had this real physical altercation. If we, if, the, if the information we have is correct. Right. And he bludgeons her. Okay. Uh, with a rock or whatever he used. You know, did he kill her right then and there, or did he kill her later when he got her in the tunnels? Okay. All right. And then he goes, he, so he goes through that whole effort of dragging her away. And then the effort of taking all her clothes. I mean, I have to believe the guy knows the trail in the area pretty well there. He may have been there for a short time. He probably booked, you know, ran like hell out of California, out of LA. But, um, you know, I mean, to spend that time there and everything else and to go through that ritual, you know, um, you know, and it, it shows a little sophistication to me because he's thinking some of his DNA got on her clothes, you know, and uh, I'll by removing her clothes, uh, they won't get any of my DNA, you know. Uh, but it, again, you know, these guys are dumb like rocks. You know, they're dumb like dogs. I mean, they, a lot of them, a lot of them. Some, some are smart, but, you know, really the vast majority uh, aren't that bright and well. And, you know, so off you went with all their clothes and everything, and they got his DNA anyway. But again, he got to enjoy whatever his fantasy is or fetish, or I won't say enjoy it, but he got to live it because they never really truly enjoy it a lot because it's it, it, they have this perfect fantasy and it's never perfect. Never, 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 never. I've never talked to anybody who said it was, you know, uh, just perfectly what they fantasized. Yeah, so that's what how normally when we talk about cases, you would say it's an addiction, right? So that's also what we're saying. If he was so committed to getting what he wanted to get, that shows that addictive nature. He needs to now, the urge is there. He needs to get whatever he's trying to get. That's Absolutely. Scary yeah, so he will again, and and he would get because he, it, he's addicted. I mean, he just the urge is too powerful for him to uh, deal with. So also back to the the victim in the home invasion, because a lot of people are victim blaming, saying why would anyone walk him to the door? But it's because of that compliance, right? It's the survival instinct that kicks in. There's many ways that people react to trauma. So if it was her walking him to the door, that makes sense, right? In the context of if you say anything if you identify me i'll come back and kill you that's what you were saying in the beginning and i'll kill your family yeah <laughs> you know that's what they did you know what they say and uh yeah absolutely uh her at that point in time she's in survival mode okay she's so traumatized she's in survival mode all right she just had some big gigantic well-built nut come through her window or something right and surprise the hell out of her, okay? So, you know, she's focused on just surviving the situation. And again, there's no sketch. There's no sketch. All right? So that tells us how traumatized she is, how scared she is, okay? You know, I have to believe that, uh, you know, uh, he just really, really, scared the hell out of her and sad to say is he gave her a life sentence probably because i don't think she'll ever forget it mm -hmm. she's gonna suffer a life sentence with that hopefully she'll get over it and uh, she'll be strong enough to cope with it and beat it but you know that early trauma can be a life sentence yes and where do you think a killer like this would go now you know if i had to put myself in his shoes probably a really busy place like new york city or what <laughs> Yeah, he'd want to go where there's a heavy Hispanic population. You want to get lost in the city. 
is a good choice, depending on what ties he has to Maryland, and also trying to get to the border. You know, but trying to get to the border too. That, and I'm sure they're they're on top of it. You know, they're really watching that. You know, hopefully we won't have to, and hopefully the next thing we'll hear. And there's a part of me that's optimistic about this that there will be a collar in the not too far distant future, because. Uh, you know, there's a full court press on for this guy. There's ten thousand dollar reward up. You know, you're going to get some street people that could use ten grand. They know this guy. Uh, they know he's from California. He's new in town, new in the area. I mean, they'll they'll uh, they'll put him up there. And don't forget, these cops they're doing a good job. They're they're covering they're dotting the i's, crossing the t's. They're really trying to keep their uh, area safe, public safe. Um, you know, they're they're on top of this. They know. Uh, a lot of these street informants or whatever, and uh, you know, uh, they're 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 uh, you know they're going to be uh, a move. They're moving on this. They have all these tips, and they just have to clear through these tips. I think he's in the tips because he's too new in that area, too new to know that trail and everything, and have familiarity with it. Um, you know, so. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in there already. Uh, and I think something else you mentioned on one of your shows is very good. Uh, the early tips like we did in Delphi. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, you know, you nailed that. I mean, that's just, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes people slip through the cracks. and uh, Yes, don't overlook you know. those early tips. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, you could, be sitting, you could be sitting with a nuclear bomb if you overlook them, you know. Yeah, so I hope they interview everyone, I'm sure they will, in that area where the home invasion happened, because they could have a lot of clues. Yeah, yes. Well, and, and and now uh, the other thing, too, is don't forget, you pro in, in L.A., in that area, you probably have street guys and street snitches, you know, and they could use 10 grand to keep their habit going, right? So, you know, they they probably have an idea who this guy is, because I'm telling you, this guy was known before uh as for some uh pretty weird stuff and uh you know i i see as part of his evolution um uh, you know uh we've seen it with so many you know first they first they start to look you know and uh, from the street and then they start to look through the windows and then they start to enter right and then they when nobody's home then they start to enter when people are home um you know then they attack i mean it's a you know it's a progression it's like any other addiction uh you know you build up a tolerance so you progress to the next higher dose you know and that's what goes on here they you know but they need more they need more of a stimulator they need more stimulation so they progress to riskier behavior you know uh, the forbidden you know i mean that's that's what really floats their boat you know? Yes. Well, uh, thank you so much for all your wisdom, your oh, insights, I, and the I, brainstorming. I, I, we love yeah. brains. I love brainstorming with you. You got me thinking now yeah. that, like, oh my word, when you said that the theft, when you said theft, I'm like, oh my word, that's probably what he does. And he could have something in that shoe. You know, he's carrying his shoes and the jacket over. What's in the shoe? Did you steal something? Or you got something in your pocket there? Or what? Like, if it's theft he's into, then I would go with it's fetishes that he's into. What's he stealing? Well, we know. Well, we know based on what they told us, the the witness, that he took all her clothes, Rachel. So I'm like, oh my word, yeah, you got my brain going. <laughs> I, I I I'm glad, and it starts. It starts with the theft and the risky behavior, and then the fantasy grows, and then they move on to the sexual assaults. You know, but you know what? You guys are terrific. I can't thank you enough for having me. I mean, I can't thank you enough for uh, all the Grizzlies. And, um, you know, giving us such kudos, um, you know, you guys are great. You, you run a great ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's very comprehensive. Um, you know, I tell people, listen, if you want the full story, go to Gizla. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to catch the guy. I, I'm only hitting, I'm, you know, I'm working the angles, you know, I'm working the angles. I mean, Gizla will give you the whole story. You know, and, uh, 
you know, a, a nice tool for us. You are a very nice tool for us uh, because you're so comprehensive and you get the information out there. So um, you're definitely informing for us. I mean, you uh, you know, you you keep us uh, in the know on uh, what's going on, and we can start to, to. Well, she said that. Let's look at this. And let's put that over here. But she brought that up, you know, so she could actually use Google and drive around the area and check it out. And everything. I mean, so this all adds up. See, so working together, and we love working with you. I mean, working as a team. I mean, this is, you know, this is how it really and truly works. Yes. You know, if you want to save lives and and bring this guy down, you know, and he will, as you and I have said before, a couple different occasions and different people that we've been involved with and gone after, he'll end up in a cage. It's only a matter of time. Uh, let's just hope sooner than later, because this guy is a live wire. So we'll see. And I truly, I, I, I just have this optimistic feeling because, um, you know, he's out. He's he's not in L.A. He's in Maryland, and they're much different. And somebody knows that he's there, or knows him, and knows he came from L.A. And that's so, true as well. Yeah, as I, you say, I, somewhere. I, Yes. That's what I believe. And then the uh, there's women that I'm sure have come across him and, um, you know, that uh, he would really play the role with and uh, he'd go after uh, what, what, um, what we're going to have to keep an eye and see where, you know, does he move now to, does he change his MO and head towards sex workers now as he continue like Bundy to go after the girls next door. You know, that's what we're going to have to see. Well, thank you so much. I really thank appreciate you, it. Thank and I hope, you. I, I hope you'll be back soon. I will. I will. Whenever I, you invite me, I'll, I'll end up making time and showing up. You better believe it. I enjoy this joy bring story with you and my very best to the Grizzlies. And thank you so much, Grizzlies, for having me. Gisla, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm really honored. Have a wonderful day.